I truly feel like your patients appreciate your table side manner, Dr. Debro. And I just got to say, on this season of The Real Housewives of Orange County, you really exuded that signature table side manner of yours when the Nicole James lawsuit drama came up. I mean, the second that it caused a ruckus at the party, you and Heather spoke to her so kindly and squashed that drama so quickly. So, and I never wanted to say anything because I don't think you did anything wrong. I didn't, but, but, but I don't, I don't first want of all, to be it's in this okay. position. No, 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 no. no. Let, okay. let me just tell you something. Nicole, let me just tell you something. You dropped it, it went away, it's fine, okay? But by the way, can I just say something? Thanks for dropping it. <laughs> What was going through your mind in that moment and why was it important for you two to find resolution so fast? Well, I didn't know. I didn't know because it happened 20 years ago and it was one of these things that came and went and really wasn't a big deal. And so um, it, at first it was like, wait, what, who, huh? And I didn't, you know, it was the, she was a different name back then. I don't remember much of it. And then I had to even ask her what happened. And then, so to be honest with you, my initial reaction was I felt bad because that meant that there was a problem. And so if I'm your doctor and there's a problem, you know, I feel bad about it. And obviously we worked through and it was no big deal. And Heather and Nicole were friends and she's a wonderful girl. So I felt bad that, you know, she was blindsided with it. I was blindsided with it. And to be honest with you, I wasn't on camera at that party, but I was eagerly awaiting the sushi okay behind the scenes and i got news for you as soon as that happened and the party disrupted it was like there was no sushi we didn't get to eat the wagyu beef we had spent a fortune even though other people say production pays for the party not true not when you throw a party like that production doesn't pay for it okay production is not going to be able to pay, pay for a no-go party in your house and, it, and if and if if they would pay for it, well they won't let's just put it that way so I was, you know, on multiple levels, not the least of which with my appetite, I felt like, ah, oh, this, this is happening to me. I'm not even getting to eat the Nobu meal tonight. How would you describe your return to the housewives in general? Are you enjoying being back in the spotlight in this way? I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm so used to filming that when I was doing it, I just thought I was hanging out. I really didn't think I would be involved in any drama. But the one thing that was really surprising in a positive way was when we were on the show previously, some of the husbands were like kind of iffy. You know what I mean? Every one of these husbands is such cool guys, guys I would hang out with, that we had so much fun. And every party we went to was like, hey, big hugs, no drama. We just really enjoyed each other. I would just recommend that if you go to a housewife party, leave before the second half, leave before the blood alcohol concentration starts to elevate beyond a certain point, because that's when the drama happens. So go eat, drink, enjoy, and get out of there before the second half. Just when you thought you've seen everything unbotched, you guys always continue to surprise us with new shocking plastic surgery cases. How would you sum up this new season? Uh, isn't it different? This season is very different. I know. Just when I thought it was going to be another season of impossible to fix plastic surgery done for cosmetic reasons, we now get into a new world of plastic surgery gone wrong for congenital deformities, for cancer reconstruction, for trauma. I mean, it's a really heavy, high stakes, intense, but I think naturally humorous season, oddly. In the super tease, we see a moment where you walk away from a consultation because it appears as though your emotions get the best of you. It's emotional. Ah, I'll be right back. I haven't seen that before, ever. What can you tell me about that moment? Um, you know, it, I have children, and it was this person talking about how their parents couldn't relate to how they felt about growing up. And my kids have, you know, all different kinds of sexuality issues and things like that. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad that they were born to us 
a very accepting family. And we feel like if you're born with blue eyes, that's what you have. You have blue eyes. So, but this person was telling us a story where their parents didn't feel that way. And so it just got to me. You and Paul have really worked hand in hand with the trans community over the course of many seasons. How would you describe that experience? I learned that it's, it, it's an exceptionally difficult journey and that fortunately society is beginning to evolve and understand and appreciate that it's as natural as being gay. It's as natural as having blue eyes or being six foot five or not. And so it's just something I think that is slowly becoming more accepted and more understood and appreciated. And it's not easy. It's not easy even when you are accepted. So I think it's a very, you know, it, it requires a lot of support and a lot of uh, really going beyond yourself and your own, your own selfishness in many ways. When you see one of your patients look in the mirror for the first time and see the great work that you've done, how would you describe the experience for yourself? Is it emotional? Uh, it's unbelievably fulfilling and satisfying. And, you know, for these botch patients, in many ways, this transformation represents one of those most significant, what I call binary things in your life. You know, when you go from being unmarried to married, having children or not having children to having children when a, 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 a parent is alive versus a parent passes away, those like really pivotal moments in your life, to be able to deliver a, I'm deformed, I'm unable to do this, I can't be in public, to suddenly I'm normal again, that's one of those big landmark moments of life that is so satisfying that makes it worth putting yourself at risk.